Today we're going to be doing a tree painting and you're going to need white paper or your sketchbook, a pencil to draw with, your hand, your left hand if you paint with your right hand, or if you're a left-handed writer or painter, you're going to use your right hand to do the tree, watercolors, and <laughs> something funny always happens during a video, and a little glass of water or a cup of water with small paintbrush. If you do not have um, this type of watercolor, watercolor pencils would be okay. Um, and one student asked if they could do this project without watercolors at all. So if you want to use color construction paper, what we'll be doing is we'll be kind of tearing the paper to make our leaves. So it could be pink if you want to do like a spring cherry blossom uh, type tree. You could use just green for the leaves if you would like. So we'll get to that part a little bit later. So the first thing you're going to do is take your pencil and your arm and hand and you're going to put your hand down on your paper so that you fill the space with your fingers spread apart. And so this is going to be the tree trunk. These are going to be the tree branches, so you want to have little spaces in between your fingers. And once you've got that centered on your paper, just trace around. You don't have to go too dark. And each individual finger is going to be part of your tree. So this would be for my first and second graders for sure, but the older students can do it this way too. And there's another way I'm going to show you in a few minutes for my older students. So this is gonna serve as the, the tree itself. And then if you think of the colors on a tree, what do you think of? So right now I'm taking my paintbrush with a little bit of water and you can tap your brush off if you've got too much water. And then you're gonna go onto your brown paint and you don't have to dig, okay? You just gently twirl it around. And I'm going to go inside of where I drew my arm and hand. And each time you need more paint, you just dip it back in. I didn't go back to the water that time because it was wet enough already. But if it dries out on you, then you can go back to your water. Kind of tap, tap some of the water off. By the way, I put an art sticker on my um, glass so that I wouldn't get it mixed up with a drinking glass if I was going to be drinking something while I was painting. That's important, but if you don't have anything to drink, you'll be fine. Just remember not to drink your paint water. So I'm just going up into all of my tree branches, or fingers as you drew. It's okay if you go outside the lines because we're going to be putting our tree leaves over top of these branches in a few minutes. And don't worry if the colors go light. That's normal for watercolors. They're not real dark. They're kind of light. You can go darker if you want to by just adding more watercolor paint. Okay, and see how I just kind of finish up that way? And like I said, you can always not dip it in the water, dip it in the already moistened um, color, and you can go back over top of that a little bit, but if you go over it too many times, you might tear your paper because there is water, of course, that you're using. So see how much darker I'm able to get by going over it twice? Tree trunks and branches do have some texture, so you don't really have to get this perfectly smooth. Um, in fact, you can add texture if you would like, you know, by dabbing the brush. And so that gives me a little bit of tree trunk texture um, by just dabbing the brush and putting on more of the watercolor. And I'm not trying to do them each 
uh, perfectly, or I'm not trying to get each one of the dabs exactly the same. Okay, so I've got my tree trunk painted, and what else do trees have on them? They have leaves. So you want to swirl your paintbrush around in the cup real good. Okay, and remember not to get this water near your computer or your electronic device. And keep a steady hand, be careful, because you don't want water someplace that you don't mean for it to go. So keep an eye on it and make sure you're being careful. I'm gonna go in with a moistened brush and get some green paint. You can use the same brush, just make sure you clean it in the water first, and then go into the green. And the technique we're gonna use is called pointillism. There were some artists in the 1800s who were called Impressionists, and they used the technique that I'm using here, which is dabbing the paint. <clears throat> and you can go over your fingers a little bit if you want, because those are tree branches, and we want the tree look, you know, to where the leaves are slightly covering the branches. I'm not just gonna keep it in the white area only. And so, you know, I can go back to the original brush if I want to um, get some smaller little dabs. Like I said, you can use the same brush the whole time if you want to. There are some little bubbles on there, um, but those will calm down and dry, so those bubbles won't really stay there the whole time. Yours may not have bubbles, but if there are some there, don't worry about it. So you can see the difference in the dabs that this paintbrush makes and one that's a little bit larger and a little bit softer. But I like both, so I'll use both. Again, you don't have to wet your brush after you've already wet it the first time. You don't have to keep wetting it each time you go back to get paint because the paint is already wet. And if you put too much paint in there, it's gonna mix in with all the other paint colors and then you won't know what colors you have anymore. So I want my tree leaves to completely fill in this white area at the top where the fingers or the branches are. And you can do the same. And then I'm not gonna come down all the way onto the hand. I'm just gonna overlap the fingers a little bit. Okay, when you're happy with how much you've covered your paper with the dabs or the pointillist dots, then we're gonna kind of let that dry for a little while. And the reason we need to let it dry is because if we keep adding more paint on top of wet watercolor, it will um, wrinkle your paper a lot. It's already just wrinkled a little bit and that, that's okay, it didn't even come through on my next page, and that's what you want. Um, if it does come through, it's no big deal, but like I said, too much water on your paper will cause it to buckle or you know, bend up too much, so you're gonna have to be patient and let it dry. Um, things that you can think about doing are adding grass in this white space while the top part is drying. So um, if you think about how the grass looks, in real life, you could add some, you know, you can go straight across with just green, um, except where the tree trunk is, and just do it real watery like that, which is kind of pretty. Don't go all the way up to the leaves or you're gonna lose your leaf look. So I would stay down low, and guess what? The sky looks like it touches the ground if you look outside. I'm looking out my window right now and it looks like the sky touches the ground. There's no empty white space in between. So what color is the sky? And I can hear everybody saying it's blue most of the time. So I'm going to use blue right where my grass stopped and I'm gonna fill in this white space not going over my tree trunk because then it looks like the sky went into your tree trunk on um, both 
both sides while the other watercolor paints are drying. Okay, so that is a good start for my first, second, and even the rest of you. But if you're in first and second grade, this is an awesome start for you today and you can just keep going. Once it's gotten dry enough, you can go back and add more leaves because when you overlap, you get a fuller effect. But wait till that dries and be patient. And you could even go in with another color if you want there to be blossoms like on cherry trees and spring magnolia trees that bloom, uh, even those pear trees. So if you wanna go back later and add blossoms on your tree, you could. But that is the tree hand craft project for my younger students. Okay, what if you are um, wanting a little bit more advanced project to do? 